Once you get into building and you've actually made your ROM, the next thing that you need to do is somehow post it on uh, XDA. Of course, there's other places you can post your ROM, and you're welcome to do that wherever you like, but here we're talking about XDA and kind of XDA etiquette and that sort of thing. So I want to talk about how to post a ROM uh, on XDA. And there are many different methods to do this. They do have some official templates that you can follow for posting a ROM. Um, but I just want to touch a few basic things. Um, when you post your ROM and you start your thread in the you know, Android development for whatever phone or tablet or device that you have, uh, there's a couple things that I, I recommend that you'd want to do. The first is uh, using these bracket systems, you can kind of put some information in there. For instance, uh, you should put that it is a ROM, if it is in fact a ROM. So that way people know when they're scrolling through, oh, here's a ROM. Uh, the next thing is uh, I recommend putting the version number of Android that the ROM is for or the version number of the ROM version number. For instance, uh, uh, Lineage follows a different version number than the Android version number. Uh, so a couple things to think about there. And and then just the title of the ROM. What is it? You know, in this case, AOKP uh, N for Nugget. And what devices it's for and whether it's official or unofficial. And you should, of course, know if your build is official or not. Um, but if you have any doubts, your build is unofficial. So you'll know if you're if you're building official material because you'll be officially part of the team that builds, for instance, for AOKP uh, in this case. So this unofficial build, and you just want to let users know this is an unofficial build. You just built it yourself. It may not be official but that doesn't mean it's not good it's just not one of the official builds and with that um, you know uh, then you can you can post about your ROM so a couple of things that I recommend putting in your post about your ROM is you should start with some sort of phrase to talk about what the ROM is uh, it's really popular to put in a picture of the ro logo or um, banner for the ROM that you've developed. If it's something you made yourself, you're welcome to make your own banner and, and put that on there. Uh, in this case, you know, it was AOKP, so I uh, just borrowed their banner and put it on there to say, hey, this is what it is. So that way people uh, kind of see the branding, so to speak, so they know what it is they're looking at. Uh, a description of the ROM, uh, and uh, in my case, since it's an unofficial ROM, I like to inform them that this is unofficial and they should uh, be weary of that. Uh, with that, you should always include, uh, not necessarily in this order, but you should always include some sort of download information. Um, in my opinion, I think it's important to include installation instructions because you will save yourself a lot of time. Uh, a lot of users uh, aren't familiar with how to install every ROM and if there is anything at all unique about your ROM you should definitely have instructions and even if it, it's not unique you'll save yourself time by putting the instructions there because users will hopefully read the instructions and then say oh I need to do this to install it rather than not having instructions and then they have to make a post and say hey how do I install this ROM and you're like well like you install every ROM and you're like well how do I do that so instructions I think they're really useful uh, <clears throat> you know obviously any warnings or information that you wanna provide you'll see a lot of them they'll say hey this is this is uh, you know not you are not responsible for what happens to your phone just covering themselves that's a good idea uh, I like to put in um, a list of what works and what doesn't so um, for instance, in this particular ROM, which was from a couple years ago, there's a problem with the automatic time zones. And so I want to let users know, hey, this feature doesn't work. So that way I don't get 300 posts to say, hey, this feature doesn't work. I'll be like, yeah, I know. I, I put it in the, the first post here. Um, and again, the order of this is kind of your preference. Like I said, they do have a template for these. Um, mine doesn't exactly follow the template. Um, you should uh, kind of do what uh, makes the most sense or flow for your uh, your 
particular ROM. Uh, I like to use these hide buttons to hide things so that way it's not too long of a post. If they're not looking for all this information, they can just not click on the show link or show content button so then they don't have to see it. Um, but uh, you do what uh, works best for you. And then uh, I, I like to tell them uh, some information about where I got the sources, uh, what devices it works on. I like to uh, send out some thanks to some people and give some disclaimers like we talked about to say, hey, AOKP is not responsible for any damages to your device. You know, um, And then give some links to where they can look up information about the ROM itself. Like if they have a question that's not related specifically to your your ROM, but to the brand of ROM that you're releasing, uh, I think that's really helpful. I like to release the source code so they can go and uh, download that ROM source code themselves in their official website. And then also for uh, my device tree, you know, what I was using and my kernel trees so they can go and get that information and build it themselves if they'd like. And, and some information specific to the ROM. Okay, it's OS version 7.1. Uh, it's uh, kernel Linux 3.4.112. Uh, it's based on AOSP and Lineage OS. So that way they know what it's based on. They know what kernel version. They know what ROM version. Um, and I think it's helpful to say when you created it and when's the last time that you updated this post. Uh, that just lets them know essentially when's the last time you touched this this particular ROM. And then uh, I feel a change log is, is really helpful because they can see uh, changes over time and uh, they would know um, perhaps if they've been following along and downloading the ROM they would know if they necessarily wanted to save an older version and stick with that. Um, again these don't all have to be in the same post but you could definitely put them all on the same post. Uh, typically I'll do the first one where I talk specifically about the ROM and then the second post I'll cover things like features and screenshots so here we've got all the features of this ROM and then uh, screenshots to go with it so that way they can uh, look at what the ROM looks like. My internet's really slow today so we'll skip on that. Uh, and then I make a third post typically where I have notes, information about uh, you know how to fix something or um, how to use something or some other tool or something that I put in there. Uh, for instance, uh, in here I put some thanks to uh, Side for showing me how to fix the video camera issues because uh, he really was the one who um, spearheaded how to fix that and that was great. Um, so I wanted to give credit where credit was due and then you know post some other uh, information like where I got the backgrounds and a few things like that and then you know users start posting their questions and testing things out so when it's time to post your ROM like I said they do have templates that you can use you can uh, also just you know look at another uh, ROM that's in your forum for your phones and see if you like that or not um, a couple of just key highlights to put on there. I do want to say that often uh, ROMs do not include any kind of screenshot and I feel including some screenshots is important so they know what your ROM looks like um, even though you might think well it looks just like every other ROM well it's it's important to include uh, I feel it's important to include some screenshots so they know exactly what they're getting. So just uh, just kind of a basics of how to uh, start a thread for posting your ROM and your work, uh, something that would be orderly, make sense, and hopefully uh, give them, uh, you know, a clear view of what it is your ROM does, and so whether or not they want to install it. Otherwise, if you just don't put any information, if you literally just put, hey, I made this ROM, here's the download link, they're going to sit there and say, oh, well, what does it do? What's special about it? What? Why should I you know install it is there anything interesting in it and by having you know things like the feature list or the screenshots um, and the change logs and the and the what works and what doesn't then they uh, you just alleviate a lot of questions that people will have 
Um, one other side note very quickly, I typically will have the ROM and then the old download for a ROM. Um, as I go through the change log and things change, uh, what I like to do personally is to keep the latest version and the last version available for download. And the reason I do that is because if all of a sudden I thought, wow, I made this change and now I've got this even better ROM to release so I'm going to release the latest version and I do that if I took down all the other links so the only thing they could do is download this one uh, sometimes you might find oh you made a mistake or there's something not good about that ROM like they go to use it and for instance the GPS doesn't work or something like that then until you get a chance to fix it there's still the old download and they can always go back to the old version and uh, while you work on whatever the problem is that you've just introduced into your ROM. So that's that's just me personally. You can do uh, whatever you like. That does take more space when you're hosting in that in that way, but uh, that's that's completely up to you. So just some things to consider when it is finally time to uh, post your work and put your uh, ROM out there for other people to use.